What's going on class? This is AV203, it's your instructor, Christopher Walton. Um, we are going, we are in week 10 this week. So moving right along, about six more, six more weeks left. Woohoo! Um, first, I want to apologize for putting this, this uh, week out later than, than normal. There goes the camera. For putting this week out later than normal, I apologize. It's been a busy, hectic week. Very hectic week for me. Um, I'm not sure if you know, I'm in a, I do real estate as well when I'm not working at the airport full time or teaching online. For Averett, I do real estate as well. And this has been a busy week as far as transactions go. So I've been running running around like a chicken, <laughs> chicken with my head cut off. But we're getting we're getting caught up. So um, to adjust, that's not, like I said, that's not fair to you that the uh, week's coming out later than, than was promised and anticipated. So I'm going to adjust the due date for this. Sorry, I'm trying to fix my camera. I'm going to adjust the due date for this week. Um, that way you have a little more time to get the discussion done. So this week, excuse me while I fix my, break my camera. There we go. This week we're, um, we're in part 135 operator. So last week we discussed what air charter is and air taxi. This week we're talking about fractional ownership. Um, that's also under part 135 and what that entails. Um, really quick, what is fractional ownership? It is a fractional ownership program. It's pretty much a multi-year program covering a pool of aircraft, um, each of which is owned by more than one party and all of which are placed in a dry lease exchange pool to be available to any program participant when the aircraft in which such participant owns an interest is not available. So that's the, that's the FAA legal definition. Um, in layman's terms, what that means is pretty much fractional ownership. There's a group of people, so say there'd be five people, and we each have a share into a aircraft program. Um, what that share entails is uh, by paying my buy-in amount per year, um, I get that aircraft for a certain number of hours. Um, so say five people, 100 hours, I might get the aircraft for 20 hours, um, 20 hours throughout the year, if it is available. Um, I can't use it if you're using it. Um, she can't use it if we're using it, that kind of thing. So, and then it comes with its with its own pilot, things like that, the, the specifics. But that's pretty much general. It's a lease program. I'm leasing an aircraft. I buy in a share. Think of it as a timeshare almost. Um, a timeshare except for aircraft. So it has its pros and cons. We're going to talk about that. But that's the general definition of it. Um, with fractional with fractional ownership, a single company provides the they provide the management services to support the operation of the aircraft by the owners and the administrators and everybody in the aircraft exchange program on behalf of the participants. Management handles the, they handle the maintenance, the crews, the hiring, the admin, like paperwork, the details, the accounting, the books, everything in relation to the operation of the aircraft. Um, so that, that's one pro, it's easy. The, uh, say I'm an elite lessee, the, um, I buy in, I don't have to worry about getting a crew, I don't have to worry about upkeeping the maintenance of the aircraft. I just use my use my hours, my share, my piece, and I'm I'm good to go. Um, there's different. Usually in that pool, there are different aircraft available. And like I said, we're gonna get into the, as we go along. Different aircraft available. So if one aircraft isn't available for the time period I want, then I might be offered another aircraft. Um, by purchasing an interest in the aircraft, the user gains a fraction or a share of the aircraft in the program, the user also gains access to the aircraft, to other aircraft in the program. So like I said, if my aircraft's not available, um, I wanna use your Citation X, it's not available. Um, hey, you wanna use this Gulfstream 450, that kind of thing, that's that's how it works. The share size determines the amount of down payment, the monthly management fee, and the annual flight hour allocation. It's pretty much the bigger buy-in you, you get, the, the more flexibility and more power you have. Um, if I have a, like I say, if I have a one fifth share, um, of course it's going to cost me more as an individual or company, but I'm getting, I'm getting more hours to fly. I'm getting more um, options to choose from versus if I have like a one sixteenth or one twentieth buy-in, then I, I have less hours to fly and less, less options to choose from. Um, the share sizes that are typically, the share sizes that are typically available run in increments. So, um, for example, one half. Um, or 400 flight hours per year, um, one fourth or 200 flight hours per year, maybe one eighth of share and 100 flight hours per year, or one sixteenth and 50 flight hours per year. Um, share owners have the ability to upgrade to larger aircraft or downgrade to smaller aircraft. Share size also determines availability of multiple aircraft. So like I said, 
say I own it, I have a one one eighth interest, and you have more than that, you have a two two eighth interest, then you would be at, you you'd have more more availability to multiple aircraft. You're paying more, so naturally that makes sense. Um, we also have the ability to upgrade to a larger. If I want, like, hey, I want more shares. Can I have access to these larger aircrafts? We have the ability to do that. Um, there's a number of different fractional ownership companies out there. You might have heard of a few. Um, sorry, there goes the camera again. Um, some are like NetJets. Um, that's that's a main one. Um, Flight Options, FlexJet, Jet Alliance, Executive Airshare, um, Jetit. There's a number of fractional ownership programs out there. None, well, sorry, I take that back. A few operate like turboprops, the Pilatus, PC-12, King Airs, um, that sort of thing. And most do jets, um, and it varies from like very light jets to mid-size to light to heavy. Um, it all depends. Most are global, have global operations, so they'll fly anywhere from like New York to Beijing to Tokyo, back to LA. Um, very, a couple stay just based in North America, but it, like I said, it all, it all depends. Um, the pros and cons. So lastly, the pros and cons of fractional ownership. The pros are the aircraft availability. So you're guaranteed at any time with as little as four hour notice that an aircraft will be available for you. If one is not available for you, they'll upgrade you to a, another aircraft that is available for you. Um, unlike charter operations, there's no charge for a deadhead flight segment. So say you um, you fly somewhere and there's all the aircraft's empty, we gotta fly back, we're gonna charge you. They don't do that. Uh, multiple. <clears throat> Excuse me. Multiple aircraft availability, so you have different options to choose from. Say one, you decide, hey, I'm going to use my use my uh, my share power and get a, a aircraft. But next time I have more people, more family, more friends, I want to get a bigger bigger uh, aircraft. You have that flexibility. And then there's naturally some financial advantages because you're not paying for maintenance, you're not paying for the crew, um, you're not paying insurance, any of that. It's bundled into your your share cost. Um, the cons. It's a large capital investment, so um, the fraction of the cost of a new aircraft. <laughs> so if you do the math wise, you, you it all depends on what your company is and what you're operating. It might be better for you to lease an aircraft or get a corporate flight department versus putting in that fraction of a ownership for a, a jet and a share program. Um, and then it's a large monthly fixed operating cost. So yeah, you're not paying those variable costs as far as insurance. Um, compliance requirements, staffing, bookkeeping, all of that, but you are doing, um, you are paying that fixed amount for that monthly use of the share. So um, that's that's all I have as far as fractional ownership. I'm gonna attach a link below that way you can check out on um, one fractional ownership company and then uh, there'll be the discussion as well. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just let me know. Take care.